YouTube. Thanks for stopping by my channel. My name is Shiloh and I am a cross stitcher and knitter living in Nova Scotia, Canada. You can find me on Instagram as at xstitchmd and on Ravelry as at Dr. Shiloh. All of the links to my social media and all of the projects I talk about today will be in the drop down box below. So feel free to check that out if there's a project that is inspiring you. I hope you're all having a good start to the year. Uh, so far, 2021 feels a lot like 2020. I'm sure most of you can relate to that. So hopefully today, this video can be a little bit of an escape for you to just kind of enjoy some crafty chat. So let's get into it. I have quite a few knitting finishes to share as well as several cross stitch whips. I also want to show how I um, put my DMC floss on thread drops because I had a question about that. I'm going to show you uh, the hoop I use and kind of how I use it on my fabric, talk a little bit about, about Pattern Keeper, and I also have two giveaways, so lots of exciting stuff. Okay, let's get started with finishes. All right, so my first finish is a cowl, and this pattern is called Cedar Bird, and it's by uh, Casey Knits. I'll link the pattern below. And I use this absolutely beautiful yarn. So um, the pattern is lace on the front and garter on the back with a uh, twisted rib ribbing. <laughs> and the yarn I used is um, Olive Parks Yarn, who is a yarn dyer out of Manitoba, Canada. And the yarn is the uh, Super, Super Rush Merino Single Ply in the Betty colorway. And some of you might recognize this yarn. I used it in my Hohe Locatelli, Hohe, <laughs> Hohe Locatelli Suburban Wrap. And I had quite a bit left over, so I was able to make a cowl out of the remainder of it. Here's what it looks like on. It's very cute and cozy, and I like how it just kind of lays nicely. It's very, very soft and just squishy and wonderful. So I highly recommend this pattern. It was super fun to knit. The lace pattern is pretty easy. Um, would probably be a good beginner lace pattern. I think it's an eight row repeat if I remember correctly. Either that or four row repeat, I forget. Anyway, it's really nicely charted and also um, written out. It's great. Highly recommend this cowl. Finish number two was when I started and finished this week. I was on a knitting tear this week. And so I started and finished the Iberian Discovery Shawl. So this is a pattern by Stephen West. And I'll put in a picture of what it looks like on the pattern picture. And here's my shawl. It is huge. <laughs> Um, it is so squishy and wonderful. I'll show you some close-ups. So this had a lot of really fun techniques in it. So this here is called a welt and the way it's worked is you knit about eight rows of stockinette and then at the end you knit the first and last stitch together. It's hard to explain but it looks really cool. It makes this like welt. There's also a bunch of short rows to get this like circular shaping. Um, there's eyelets and there's a really fun uh, pico bind off. So that's where you uh, cast on some stitches and then bind them off right away. So it makes this like little bobbly edge. It was so fun to knit. It's worsted weight yarn. So the yarn is um, by Lion Brand um, and it's 100% acrylic yarn. It's their Heartland base, which is all colorways inspired by different um, US national parks and stuff. So this one was called Grand Canyon. It is beautiful and it was so, so fun to knit. And like I said, it's a worsted weight, 100% acrylic yarn. So it's very cozy and snuggly. It's very soft. Um, sometimes acrylic can be a bit like brittly, scratchy. This one isn't, it's very soft and nice. Um, acrylic yarn is uh, it can be very heavy and so I probably wouldn't knit a sweater out of this for me personally because this is very very warm <laughs> But it's really nice for a shawl because it's really cozy and snuggly um, Yeah, so it's a circular shawl and the way I like to wear it is just like this where I put the Center in the front and then just wrap the edges around it. You could also wear it um, kind of the other way But this is the way that I like to wear it so that is my Iberian Discovery Shawl by Stephen West with Lion Brand Heartland y'all yarn. <laughs> so I used um, a little bit, almost three skeins. So it was about, it was two full skeins and then probably three quarters of a third. So I think it was around 700 yards that I used. And this yarn is pretty affordable. I got mine from Michael's. 
um, and it was $7.99 a ball. So yay, that is my Iberian Discovery shawl. I'm just gonna keep it on because you know, it's cozy. <laughs> All right, the next uh, finish I had was a pair of socks. So here are my socks, which I just washed them and I, I don't block my socks, I just throw them in the washing machine and then hang them to dry. Uh, so these socks are mismatched and I love it. <laughs> the yarn I used is Area, Fiber, Area 51 Fibers, which is a Canadian dyer. I can't remember exactly where they are from, but they're Canadian dyer. And this is their sturdy alien base and the colorway is called My Favorite Rainbow. Highly recommend checking them out. They have so many gorgeous colorways and she literally comes out with a new one, it seems, every single day. I have an order from her coming with like four other sock yarns because I love her stuff. Uh, so this came with the uh, coordinating mini, which was this gray. So I knit the cuffs, heels and toes in the gray and then the stripes themselves I did in the My Favorite Rainbow color. And I knit them mismatched because uh, this came as one 50 gram ball and I can get a pair of socks out of a 50 gram ball. Usually sock yarn is sold as a 100 gram ball, which is about 400-ish yards. Um, this was a 50 gram ball, which was, oh, it actually doesn't say the yardage on it, that's fine. Usually around 250 yards, and I can get two socks out of that, um, but I wouldn't have been able to match the socks, and I kind of like how they look mismatched. So I just used a basic uh, sock pattern for this. The sock pattern I've been using a lot um, is called the basic, um, cuff down sock for dummies. It's like from the dummy series, you know, like all those books like knitting for dummies and stuff. I'll link it below. It's a free pattern. Um, the only changes I make to it is I like to knit my heel flap. I have learned this from another sock pattern and I really like it is when I do my heel flap, I knit the first three and the last three stitches in garter stitch. And it just makes it a bit easier when you are going to pick up the heel flap because you pick up the garter stitch bumps instead of the slip stitches. And it just, I don't know, I just kind of like it. Um, it's a slip stitch heel, which is really pretty. And then I do a Kitchener stitch toe. So it's a nice closure on the toe. And I figured out with the self-striping yarn when I'm knitting um, them like this is that I need uh, 10 stripes for the leg. So I do, uh, so in order to maximize my yardage, I do 12 rounds of ribbing, one by one ribbing for the cuff. I do 10 stripes, then I do my heel flap, and then I do 14 stripes for the foot, and then I do my toe. And that lets me use pretty much all of the mini, as well as pretty much all of the um, 50 gram ball. I think I could probably do an 11 stripe leg because I did have two stripes left on this sock here, so I might try that next time. But anyway, those are my socks and I started and finished a pair of socks. I literally cast on the second one as soon as I finished the first, so I'm very proud of myself for doing that. And I love how bright and cheerful these socks are. They're super fun to wear and the gray has a nice speckle to it. So yeah, check out Area, Area 51 Fibers because they have awesome, awesome sock yarns. Sorry in advance because you need to buy them all. <laughs> okay. That's my finishes. I do not have any stitching finishes, but let's move on to whips. Okay, so I have four uh, cross stitch works in progress that I've been working on and one knitting work in progress. So let's show the knitting one just cause I'm on a little kick with that. Um, this is my Felix Pullover by Savory, Savory Knitting. Um, and someone had very kindly uh, told me how to pronounce the name of the yarn I'm using, but I already forgot how to say it. So I'm just gonna show it. <laughs> uh, so this is the yarn brand and this is the type of yarn. It is a 63% wool, 37% acrylic, yes, yarn, and it's nicely heathered. And the color number is 00089. And I got this from the Love Crafts website, uh, which I'll link below. Okay, so here is my pullover and it is so cute. So this is a cropped pullover. So it hits me kind of like mid hip ish, which is kind of where I want it to. Um, Cause my plan is to wear this like over top of dresses for work. So I finished the body. So I did something new, which was a sewn, twisted sewn bind off, something like that, a sewn bind off, which gives this really lovely, lovely, really stretchy edge. Um, and I almost have finished one sleeve. So I'm using stitch markers here to mark every time I do a decrease so that I can uh, match my sleeves really easily because I just have to check to make sure I have the same number of stitch markers on both sleeves. So I think I only have like an inch or two more on the sleeve and then I do the cuff. So this sleeve is 
almost done and then I just have to do the other sleeve and then I am done. So this is very exciting. As you can tell, I kind of have a color palette <laughs> that I like. <laughs> so this kind of beigey gray color I wear a lot of and it goes with everything. So that is my Felix pullover. This is also a, this is actually like more of an Aran weight versus a worsted weight. I'm using US size uh, six, no, US size 10, which is a six millimeter needle. Um, and it's, it knits up really quickly. I highly recommend that pattern. It would also be a really great, uh, actually, I don't know if it would be a great first sweater pattern, maybe a good second sweater pattern because some of the techniques were new to me, um, but they weren't difficult. It was just like a tubular uh, cast on and things, which wasn't hard, but probably good if you have a little bit of experience knitting before you try them. Okay, that's all the knitting stuff. So let's move on to my stitching. So I had uh, three new starts at the beginning of the year. Um, I have two more new starts planned, but still waiting on supplies, etc., etc. Okay, so let's go ahead and show them. The first one is a stitch along I am hosting along with Beth, who is the desert stitcher. And the pattern we are stitching along is the bookcase pattern by Galliana Cross Stitch. And the hashtag for this stitch along is hashtag New Year Bookcase Sal. And here's where I'm at on this. Uh, so I am using a 28 count linen, um, which was a hand dyed linen, it's called Sandcastle. I got it from Stash Unload, which is a Facebook group uh, where people sell their unwanted cross stitch stuff. So I don't actually know what the designer is of this fabric. Um, so here's my progress so far. So I'm using DMC 801 for the bookcase. And then I'm using a variegated DMC floss, which I believe the number is 4386. I'll put it below if I can remember it. Um, and I'm using that for the books themselves. And the color, it's not showing up great here, but there's like purples and greens and browns in it. And I think it's really, really pretty. I like how subtle it is. My plan is to backstitch kind of this line right here and where each book connects with a gold metallic, just to kind of give a bit of differentiation between the books. And I think that's gonna look really pretty. So I'm really excited for that. Uh, this is, again, I said a 28 count linen and I'm using two strands of DMC over two. This has been really fun to stitch so far. It is gonna be really big. <laughs> so I'm using a fat quarter of fabric. So I have a lot more to go in this, but I've really been enjoying it. And I highly recommend checking out the hashtag. Um, so for those of you who don't know, on Instagram, you can follow hashtags. So if you go to my post about this, or if you just search hashtag new year bookcase Sal, you can see all the patterns or all the different people that are stitching this pattern. And you can also follow that hashtag. So if you follow a hashtag, you'll see all of those um, posts that have that hashtag in it will show up on your Instagram feed. So I like doing that because it's super fun to be able to see what everyone's doing. Everyone's doing something completely different with this pattern and it's just so cool to see. So that's super fun. I'm gonna continue working on that. The next stitch along I'm working on is the Modern Folk Embroidery Stitch Along, which is called The Fruits of Plenty. And uh, it is a stitch along released one part per month um, and it is gorgeous. There are two different options for it, a two color or one color. I'm doing the two color version. And here's where I'm at for January's part. So I've made pretty good progress on this and I'm hoping to get it finished by the end of the month because I wanna stay on track with this. So here's where I'm at. And this fabric color is not showing up great. It's, eh, it's more like that. It's a little bit lighter than it's showing. Uh, so this, and that's just totally blowing it out, but <laughs> this is 36 count Ash Rose Edinburgh Linen. And I'm using DMC 3722, which is the lighter color, and DMC 902, which is the darker color. And I just love how this is coming along. Like the colors together are just gorgeous. So super, super happy with those. Um, I'll take this opportunity just to show you the hoop I'm using. So uh, this hoop is called a flexi green, something like that hoop. And I'll link it below. So I got this from Amazon and it came as a set of three. This is the size I use the most. I think it's a six or seven inch. Um, this material is like very bendable and stretchy. So it's like a plasticky material and it gives excellent tension. So I'm just going to pop it onto my project right now. Um, I'm someone that likes a really firm tension on my fabric. And so I find with Q-snaps, I can't get enough tension. Um, like at least the way that I like. Other people love 
key snaps, that's fine. But, and a lot of the other hoops I found also don't give it quite um, enough tension. So this is the one I like. So uh, here's my hoop on my project and like, it's pretty firm. It's almost like you would want for a punch needle. Um, but I just, that's just how I like it. It helps keep my fabric straight and helps keep my stitches looking nice. I'm sorry, I don't know why it's turning blue like that. We'll keep it there. This is the color of the fabric right here. <laughs> uh, so this is, the, this is the hoop that I use and I'll link it below. I've had, um, I keep every time, so I have broken this hoop a couple of times and I just buy a new one and I love it. So highly recommend. I stitch all of my patterns with hoops. I do not stitch in hand because I find it makes my stitches look too messy. And I, like I said, I like the tension that a hoop gives. I've tried key snaps and I just like hoops better. I've never tried a floor stand or a floor frame before, um, but I tend to stitch on the couch and I like kind of curl up on the couch. So a hoop is like the most portable thing for me. So yeah, this is the hoop I use. I love it. Highly recommend it. Okay, the next stitch along <laughs> I'm working on, this is the year of the stitch along is the Wienberg Designs 2021 Winter Quaker Mystery Stitch Along. So I had seen this chart on Wienberg Designs Instagram and the part that they showed was probably a couple parts in the future because it showed this adorable little fox. And I was like, Quaker and foxes, you got me. I am all in. So I purchased this pattern. It's a PDF download from their website. And um, the way it works is you purchase the pattern from their website. I'll link that below. It's $20 US for the whole year. And when you uh, purchase it, they will email you the first pattern, um, usually the next day. So I got mine the next day. So don't worry if it doesn't come immediately. I know we're all used to like immediate gratification, but they'll email it to you, if not the same day, the next day. Um, I'm assuming that all subsequent parts will come out the first of the month, but I bought mine a couple days after the first of January. So it was emailed to me. Um, after that. Anyway, okay, so here's where I'm at so far. And this is being stitched on 36 count flax Edinburgh linen. And this color is DMC, uh, ooh, I think it's just DMC white. Yes, it is DMC white. Blanc. Uh, how pretty is this? I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So the first part has been released and my goal is I really want to stay caught up on both my Modern Folk Embroidery and my Wienberg Designs stitch alongs. Um, and I think I can do it. Um, I definitely can finish my Modern Folk Embroidery run by the end of the month. And this one, I think I can too. It's the next project I'm about to show you that has been distracting me entirely over the past week. So the pattern I'm talking about is Bonded by the Rain and it's the mini version from Heaven and Earth Designs. The artist is Leonid Afrinov, probably saying that wrong. Anyway, he has some gorgeous, gorgeous paintings and Heaven and Earth Designs has converted those to cross stitch. They're available in a couple different formats. So there's the mini version, which is the one I'm doing, which is smaller. Um, it's still the full pattern, but it's smaller. I don't really know how they did that, but anyway, it's smaller. <laughs> and then there's also kind of the full size version and then there's the max color version, which is like, confetti galore. So for those of you who don't know, uh, confetti stitching is kind of when there's a lot of random stitches of all different colors versus a lot of times in cross stitch you have like blocks of one color. Confetti stitching is when there's just like dots everywhere and it's a lot of stopping and starting of your thread. Okay, so I will show you where I'm at now because I actually made quite a bit of progress on this. So here's where I'm at. Okay, this is just <laughs> struggling. So here's where I'm at and I've almost reached the other side. So I think the other side of the pattern is around here. So I'm getting close to that. I have a couple of dangling threads there. So the original way I was stitching this pattern is I was stitching it on the diagonal and I was parking. So parking is when you're stitching along in blocks and when you finish a color and there's no more of it beside it, you bring the thread to where it next appears in the pattern and you just drop it and hang it there, which you can see I've done with these two threads. Um, and then you kind of just move along and then when you get to that new thread, then you stitch it. I was doing that, um, but it's a lot of threading and re-threading and I was just getting kind of like annoyed by that. So recently I was watching Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, who, check her out. Her videos are awesome. And she does a lot of full coverage pieces. And the way that she started doing them probably in the last month or so is instead of, she was doing a lot of parking, but now she's doing cross country stitching. 
So this is a lot of terminology. Basically cross country stitching is picking a color and just stitching it until your string runs out. So you just keep going with it and that means you might be jumping around a lot. So if we look at this color, for example, it was here, I jumped over here, I jumped over here, I jumped over here. And if you look at my back, it's hideously messy, but who cares because like once all it's all stitched over, all of that gets covered. And it just is so much faster because you're not stopping and starting threads all the time. I'm, I'm loading my needle with one thread and I'm stitching it until it runs out and just kind of going wherever it's found in the pattern. Um, I So I did have a bunch of parked threads over here and I just gradually worked them in and I just hadn't got to those yet. Um, but what I've been doing is I'm working along the top. So you can see the top is all filled in and kind of whatever color is next, I'm getting a full length thread of that and then I'm just stitching it wherever it appears so like working my way down and across I'm really liking that the only way this is possible for me is because I'm using an app called pattern keeper so let me just talk about that so pattern keeper is an app that is only available on Android devices and I had actually bought an Android device last year because I didn't have one I'm I'm an Apple girl <laughs> uh, but I got this really cheap uh, Android tablet from Amazon. So this this tablet, um, which is a Vanco, and it's like a 7.1 inch, something like that. I got it from Amazon. I'll link it below. The version I got, because I got this last year, is, um, I guess it's been like, there's a newer model out now, but it's the same price as it was when I bought it, which was $90 Canadian. So that's like, I don't know how much it is US, but it's cheaper US. Uh, so this is like, I mean, it's obviously not the highest quality um, tablet, but it works really well for me. So I'll just show you how Pattern Keeper works. I honestly don't really know how to use this tablet very well because <laughs> I just don't use Android devices. Okay, so I'll show you an example and I feel okay showing you my pattern because like how on earth are you gonna be able to stitch anything from this anyway? Okay, so here's what I've been doing. So um, the way it works with, I don't know if I can make this go away. Okay, so Pattern Keeper looks like this when you're on it. So at the top here, you can see there's three different options. So this arrow is where you can move around. Okay, so you can move, you can zoom out. So if I like zoom out on my pattern, when you highlight stitches, they turn the color they're supposed to be, which is really cool. I drew these diagonal lines in myself because I was stitching in diagonals, but I'm not doing that anymore. So it's not necessary. Okay, let me just zoom back in here. It's hard to do it when it's facing. What I'm doing and what I love this feature here, so when I'm stitching, I zoom in my chart like this. Like I like it big. This next icon here, the magnifying glass, what that allows you to do is to find all the stitches of one particular symbol. So the way I'm stitching is I'm stitching across. And so the next symbol is this square. And if I click this little arrow here, it'll show me that that square is DMC 939 and there's 3,330 stitches of that that I still have left to do. Okay, so this is awesome because it tells you what the color is. I don't have to look it up on the chart or anything like that. And um, I can make that disappear again by hitting that little arrow. And it shows me all of the stitches highlighted in green that are DMC um, 939. So if I go back to the move, I can move around and see all the stitches that are that color, which is great. So I'll just go ahead and stitch all those. And as I'm stitching, if I go on this, which is the um, highlight option, I can tap my stitches as I complete them and hit this check mark button and they're highlighted. The green is just there to show me that there's, um, that it's the same color stitch and I can switch that and look up any symbol I want. So the green is just to show me all of those stitches, but the highlight changes it to the color that it's supposed to be when it's stitched. If you make a mistake and you um, highlight the wrong stitches, you just tap on them again and you hit the frog button. Oh, how cute is that? Okay, so I hit frog and it erases it. Is this not amazing? I love it, it's great. Um, also on the side here, it shows, oh, okay, it's flipping around. 
Okay, on the side here, it shows how many stitches you've done today. So I have not stitched yet today. So it says zero and it tells you um, how many stitches you've completed. So I've completed 4,900 stitches out of 57,525 uh, stitches. So I am eight point, this is really hard to read backwards, 8.52% complete. So that's really cool because it tells you how many stitches you've done today, how many total. Um, I also really like that it shows on the side um, what, how many stitches there are of that color. Another thing that's cool too is if say you have like um, your box of thread and you're like, okay, I feel like stitching with DMC 150 today. You can just tap on DMC 150 if you're in the, um, the magnifying glass mode and it'll find all the stitches of DMC 150 for you. So I got to like, oops, I'm making a mistake. Okay, got to make sure you're in the, the moving section to do that. So if I do that, I can just zoom out and like, okay, I see that there's DMC 150 over here. And so I can work on those stitches. Basically this app is awesome for full coverage pieces. Um, people also use it for non-full coverage pieces. I like using um, the app GoodNotes on my iPad and uh, I'll just highlight it off on there. So I'm using GoodNotes for my other things, um, but I really like Pattern Keeper for full coverage and it's awesome. I highly recommend it. So that's my little tutorial about <laughs> Pattern Keeper. Okay, I also wanted to show how I put my thread on thread drops because I had a question about that. So I use this punch by Fiskars. Um, I don't know what it's called specifically, but it was like a tag punch. I got this from Michaels. Um, and I have just like regular cardstock. And what I'll do is I'll just punch out. So I just punch out um, a tag. And then I use a hole punch. And then I use a hole punch to punch a hole in the bottom. And I also punch a hole in the top. So the top hole I put on a jump ring so that I keep all my floss together. And the bottom hole is where I put my uh, thread through. So that wasn't very well, nicely centered. Um, and then just use a pen and write the number of the floss on it. So <laughs> I then just take a pen and write the number of the floss on it. So this is, the one I'm gonna do is DMC 801. So I have my DMC. 801. I just take it off the, um, oh, I just made a mistake. Okay. <laughs> Before you take it off, the end that is by the number is the end you want to unwind from. Pro tip. So that was this end here. Uh, so I just open it up carefully and I just unwind it. Okay. So if you ever wondered why your DMC tangles when you take it apart, it's probably because you're pulling from the end that doesn't have the number on it. So try pulling from that end and it'll work great. I read that tip online somewhere. Okay. Then what I do is I take the two ends, match them together, and then I just, I mean, this is obviously a lot of thread, but <laughs> straighten this all out. I do have a little kink here, but that's fine. Okay. Then I match the loop with the other end and just do that again and again, and again. I usually like to do it four times. Okay, so then you're gonna have one end that has the initial two little pieces you started with and the other end will just be all loop. So I take the all loop end and I just put it through my hole and loop it through. Then I need my scissors and cut all of the loops. So all of these are loose ends. So that's my thread. And then when I go to use my thread, I just take my needle. Oops. And what you can do is you just pull out a single thread. And it cuts out. So you don't need to take it off of the um, thread drop at all. You can just pull out a single strand at once. Um, so I usually do the loop method. So I'll just pull it off, make sure my ends are even and I'll just go ahead and stitch with this. If you are um, just using one strand, you might wanna fold your floss one more time um, and then when you pull it off, you just use the single strand. Um, but this is how I like to do it. Um, yeah, it works really well and it's super easy and it's very satisfying when you're pulling off of the strand. So I really like that. 
Okay, so that's my little thread drop tutorial. I really like making them. It's really fun. It's kind of part of my whole process of getting up my project is putting all my threads on thread drops. So hope that was helpful. Okay, um, a couple other things to talk about. Oh, well, obviously the giveaways that I mentioned at the beginning, let's talk about those. So the first giveaway I have is a beautiful sampler from Little Isola Stitchworks. And I had seen this chart posted on her Instagram and I was like, this is so cute. And I reposted it. And the designer very kindly contacted me and asked if I would like to give away a copy of the chart. So one of you lucky viewers will get a copy of the chart. It's a PDF design. I think it's so cute and just so cheery and fun. And I hope you like it as much as I do. Um, definitely check out um, this designer on Instagram. I'll link her below. And she also has an Etsy shop with a lot of really cute samplers and Biscor new patterns. Um, if you'd like to be entered to win a copy of the PDF pattern, uh, leave me a comment below and include the word sheep in your comment. I'll be using the random number, um, a random comment picker to search for comments that include the word sheep. That's giveaway number one. Uh, giveaway number two. All right, so we have an absolutely amazing little prize package from Leo and Roxy that they sent me to give away to you. Uh, the first thing is this gorgeous sock set of yarn. So it, this is their December 2020 yarn club and it's 80 percent merino 20 percent nylon so you get this gorgeous turquoisey blue with purple along with a matching navy mini this is so hard to give away i love it they also sent um a tea holiday chai black tea and they sent how cool is this it's a needle gauge so if you have a set of needles and you're not sure what size they are, you can just put them through a hole until you find one that it fits and that is the needle size. Super cool. Attach that to your yarn bag or something like that. So awesome, awesome prize. So one of you will win this. Super exciting. They also have a coupon code that all of you can use, not just the winner. So if you go to their website, which is Leo and Roxy uh, Yarn Co., uh, dot com leo and roxy yarn co.com we'll put that on the link below you can use the code x stitch md and get 15 percent off your entire purchase so it works on yarn and merchandise like the stuff here it doesn't work on any of their yarn clubs though i mean that coupon code is good until january 31st so good luck hope you win and maybe you want to buy some stuff i know i do Okay, the last thing I have to show is a giveaway I won, which was a very exciting. So this was a giveaway from Polka Dot Creek, which is a yarn dyer from Alberta, Canada, who I follow on Instagram. And she recently was giving away a um, sock set, so a sock set of yarn, and I won, which was super exciting. So it came in the mail this week, and look how beautiful it is. So it came with a really cute stitch marker, which is this adorable little present. So that's really cute. And um, the sock set is, uh, so it's the modern Christmas colorway. That's this beautiful um, minty turquoisey color with all these flecks. It's so pretty. And then it came with two minis. So the colors are turquoise and amethyst. This yarn is so soft and squish squishy. It's a 75% merino, 25% nylon. Um, check out her on Instagram and Etsy. She's got some gorgeous sock sets. She also sent, um, some of her wool wash. So this is Polka Dot Creek wool wash. So this is what uh, she recommends to use when you're washing your hand knits. So you just kind of squeeze in a little bit of this. The smell is like vanilla and caramel and what does it say? Cinnamon vanilla with a hint of caramel and apple. It smells amazing. So I'm really excited to use this when I am washing my hand knits. Um, so I'm excited to cast this on sometime soon. So thank you so much Polka Dot Creek. I was so excited to win. Okay, well, that's all I have for you this week. I'm really excited about the giveaways, so don't forget if you wanna be entered for the sampler, uh, leave me a comment with the word sheep. If you wanna be entered for the sock set from Leo and Roxy, uh, leave a comment with the word yarn. You can use both words in, your, in one comment, um, and you don't even have to use those in a sentence. You can literally just say sheep and yarn. That's all cool with me. Um, I will send the yarn anywhere in the world, so I'll ship it anywhere. It doesn't matter if you live in Antarctica or anywhere, I'll ship it. <laughs> so uh, feel free to enter. And then for the PDF pattern, it's just something that I email. So obviously I'll send that anywhere as well. 
um, good luck. And I hope you're enjoying a nice cozy weekend with lots of stitching, lots of knitting, lots of time just relaxing and taking care of yourself. I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.